Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to be able to come here to house of worship, to worship you. Help us now, O Lord, and clog our ears, our hearts, and uh, birth your Holy Spirit in us. This we ask in your name, pray. Amen. I have a, I have a medical condition, a health condition. It's been going on for since uh, since 2002. I don't know if you can see the picture, but that's got I don't know, it's an artery, it's a clogged artery. So in 2002, I went to the doctor, and uh, the doctor uh, took my blood, and she was like, I think it was a heat. It was a heat. And my test came back and said, uh, bad news. I mean, good news on other things, but you know, bad news. You, the cholesterol says since 2006. Two hundred six. You didn't see that. I was twenty-two at the time, and I was like, yeah. I was young, invincible. Cholesterol can't take me down. So uh, after that, I was like, you know, it'll take care of itself. I'm, I'm going to go join the navy, and you know, I'm going to get healthy there. You know. But it was the opposite. I was into a lot of vices. Fast forward 2009, it came out, and I was like, man, I can eat anything I want now. I cannot, I, I don't have to wake up early in the morning and exercise. UPT. <laughs> but in doing so, I also, in, in, in getting out of the Navy, I also had my first child. And then after that, I went to school. And the next numbers, wow, it's amazing. Anybody here a, a health professional? Are those good numbers? No. Oh, yeah. Some, some people have it worse. But my highest one was when I got out of maybe a 239. Right? 239. That's not very good. And I know. The, the number, I think, is 200. 200. Less the, oh, you, you should, yeah, borderline is 200, but your goal should be below that. And I know that in seeing all these numbers, that this is just the tip of the iceberg that it can be, because I can already feel it. My limbs would sometimes go numb. Isn't that a telltale sign? Sometimes I would get headaches, and you know, it's, it's it, it could be something. It could be stress. It could be a heart attack. And during these times, while I was in school, I was telling myself, you know, if you're going to see your daughter grow up, you, know, you better take care of yourself. Because you could die. See, I, I, I could live during the time. Maybe I can survive that first uh, stroke. But then, I don't want to be confined to a wheelchair or a heart attack and be, be on your bed. That's a lie, but you're not living. Mm -hmm. So so I said, you know, this change has got to be made because this is just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. So these Weimar people came over and they said, you know, you, I see your numbers. You need to change, okay? What do, you, what do you suggest I do? Cut out the red meat. Cut out your meats. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not yet, man, not yet, not me. Well, you know, well, what you can do is you can reduce it. Okay, I'll reduce it. I can do that. So I reduced it. Ate half, the, half uh, um, of the good stuff, which is uh, excellent. So I, I did a lot. Uh, I ate a lot more fruits. So you take off your meat, but you have to fill it up with something. So I ate a lot more fruits, a lot more of my nuts, a lot more grains. I didn't know there were other grains other than rice. <laughs> and I ate a lot more beans. Oh yeah, beans, beans. Good for the heart. The more you eat, the more you feel better. <laughs> the more you feel better. 
So I tried it in November. The, the, this was September when they came, when the suggestion was made. And I took that suggestion. And come November, I went to the doctor and did my annual test. And she said, what are you doing? Differently this time. Oh, you know, I cut out some meat. You know what, come back here in six months. So we did. Six months later, I came back. But, but this time around, at that time, I, I already got that hope. Hey, there is that difference. Maybe there's something in there. So I went even further. I cut my meat intake to about less than 5% of my diet. Still hung on to my fish. I love my fish. I love my fish. But come May, beginning of May, I went to the doctor did the same blood test, and she's like, Pretty good. Now, when God makes a claim, when God makes a claim, He backs it up. Amen. He says, If you obey me, if you follow my rules, I will not put the same diseases that I put on those Egyptians on you. Right? So when he says that claim, and you say, uh, and he says, in addition to that, he says, take up your bed and walk, you crippled man. And you do it. And you see the results. There is hope. There is hope. And he does back up this claim. Mm -hmm. So red meat? Maybe 1%. <laughs> <laughs> or fish. It depends, because the, the wife is, has got some hankering for something. <laughs> so, but I, I will follow that road. I will follow that road. Amen. And in, which is in the nutrition part, the food part is just the first part of that acronym, New Start. There's other parts in that, that, in that story. So, I am following Jesus. Amen. These are his rules. And he says, I will back it up. Amen. Amen. He's a health message. Thank <laughs> you. Now, I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine you and Jesus going down this structure right here. I want you to see what he's seeing and feel what he's feeling. And I want you to go out of this place with, with a renewed spirit, a rekindling of sorts. And I know we don't have a whole lot of time whole lot of time because if we if we ever study this building and, and its measurements and its uh, colors its furniture its services and all the people that are uh, associated with its services there, 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 there isn't much time in the world it will take us forever so I want us to just concentrate on one thing that this building and all that represents Jesus Christ Amen. And, and if you don't know it by now I'll tell you that for Jesus, this is him speaking, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And looking back at that structure, what we see, I'm going to tell you that this structure right here, this is heaven. This is heaven, where that building structure is, and right there in the outer court, that's earth. And in this structure, this building structure, there is a there is a most holy place. And in this most holy place, there's this there's this furniture, this hollow furniture, this wooden furniture that's inlaid with gold. It's got gold all over it. And, and it's shimmering, it's glittering. And right in this hollow center of it is is the tablet of stone law. God's law written with his own hand. And you got Aaron's rod that budded. And you got this. This manna that is unperished bread. And right on top, the covering of it is, is, is gold. It's, it's called a mercy seat. Mm -hmm. It's called a mercy seat. And on this mercy seat, there's two angels, also gold. Cherubims, they call them. 
And right in the center of it is, is God's Shekinah glory. And it says so in the Bible that in this Shekinah glory, when, when, when God's presence is in there, it fills this room up with a cloud of smoke. And you can just imagine, if you've ever been to Dubai, and, and you've, if, if you've ever been to that place, that when you sweat there, this is desert. This is that when you sweat there, it's, it's just, it kind of evaporates from your skin. This, when this temple was built, when this tabernacle was built, it was in the desert. Mm -hmm. So when you get to that cloud of smoke, I can just imagine that when you go there, you can kind of feel it all of a sudden cool down. This, by the way, the roof structure, inside the roof structure, this is a room. Shekinah glory of God brightens up the room and you see the bells, the colors. Oh my, it's pretty, it's glowing, it's luxurious. You can almost you can almost see you and Jesus. No, this is you and Jesus taking you for a tour of him. Pulling up a chair and you say, Man, this is chill. This has got to be the most comfortable place in the whole Israel. This is the middle of the desert. And you can also smell the sweet smell and aroma coming from the other room. Coming over this instant. And you can stay there forever. You can stay there forever, but Jesus says, no. Oh, not here. Not here. So he takes up the throw. Dad, hold this. And he says, come. Follow me. You have to go meet him. You have to go meet him. And as Jesus did it, hot me not. So he says to you, come. He opens this curtain. And now we're in the next room. It's called the holy place. The one before was called the most holy place. Now, it's just as, it, it's not as glorious as the room before it, but it's just as important. No, it has here the, the golden censer. I mean, the, the, the golden uh, candlesticks. And right on the other side, across it is the table of showbread. And right in the center of it is the altar of incense. Now for us to know and live these furniture, I want you to remember two songs. This little light of mine. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. And, on the, and the other song would be Read your Bible Pray every day And you'll grow So in that we can see the Christian life the bread representing God, His body broken up for us and and also the golden censer, him being the light, and also the prayer that is in there. The altar of incense. Not my will, but your will be done. Not by our hands, but by his hands. This is the Christian life. You can't have just one or two. You gotta have three. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're in your communion with God, this three is still heaven. It. It's in the roofed area. It's shady still. Remember, we're in the desert. Mm -hmm. We're in the desert. But God says, no, 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 no. I have to, I have to meet them. I have to meet them. And he takes off his robe of righteousness. And he says, and says to this fellow, let me have your, your rags. My soul shall be joyful in my God. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. Amen. So at first he says, my glory, Dad, hold on to it. My righteousness for your rags. He says, I'm not stopping you. So as Jesus had done it, I'll be in So he opens his curtain. Now he's in the blazing sun. And right in front of him, the next 
portion of the furniture is this labor, this labor, this brass labor. But it's just not any type of brass. It's, it's, it's a polished brass. Now when, when Moses asked the people to bring whatever they can to build the temple, he said he, the women brought their polished brass. And this is what they used there. And you can see your reflection. And as you and Jesus walk towards it, you see your reflection in there. And in the pool of water, you see that pretty dirty. Primarily in your hands and your feet. Jesus, no, 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 no. Let me wash it for you. Not just wash it, but I'm going to wipe it down. And after that, he poured the water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wiped them with a towel with which he was girded. But, but Jesus says, this, this is not it. I have to meet them. I have to meet them at the bridge. Come on, come. Follow me. And he sings a thing. And he goes into this next furniture. And it's a brazen, it's a brazen thing. It's probably the, the biggest furniture in there. It's this, it's this altar, they call it. With, 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 it's wooden boards. It's brazen inlaid with bronze and this grating right in the middle with its fire and its kindling and all these utensils that are used to, to service this part of the, this, this furniture with its, with its shovel for the ash, ashes with its basins and its fire pans and its flesh hooks now if you walk into a room with that kind of setting and you see it I don't know what goes in your mind this is a temple. This is a slaughterhouse. But God said, the next person that comes to the door, I will be him. For him, I will be him. Now you see, all these things that we had just gone through is the cross. From the Ark of the Covenant all the way down to, to, to the, the golden altar, to the candlesticks, to the table of sugar, to the labor, and right down right there to that brazen altar. And this is exactly what we what Isaiah says when he says that with his stripes we are healed. This is the part in Jesus' life where he says, where Isaiah says that he is a man of sorrow. This is a part of Jesus' life where he says, uh, you know, the, the foxes have holes in the ground. The birds have nests, but I don't have a place to lay my head on. This is the part in Jesus' life where he says, check out this grain. Taste it. It's pretty good. And they were about to stone him. This is the part in Jesus' life where he's sweating huge amounts of blood in the garden. Gethsemane, where he's walking towards his death in Golgotha. Now Jesus isn't asking us to bear the exact same cross that he wore, but he does ask us to bear a cross, your cross. There is a cross that Christ wants us to bear. And sometimes for us, we, we say, Lord, I've hit this one. Little toothpick. I'll bear this one. And God says, no, 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 not that one. And there are some who will bear an even bigger cross. And Lord, I'll bear this one. This big, hard to pull. The Lord, the Lord says, no, 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 not that one. I want you to bear that one. The one that's close to your heart, that cherished sin. That is the sin that I want you to bear. That I want you to get rid of. And 
and his feet like unto fine brass, as they have been burned in the furnace. So Jesus went through the furnace for us, this brazen altar where everything gets burned. But he still has that song in his heart. There's a man who's trying to save up to go to a vacation. And as he's scrimping and saving, he's, uh, he tries to find other ways to, to be able to uh, go on that vacation. Because he, does, he just doesn't want to bring himself to North Shore, Oahu, Hawaii. But he also wants to bring his family, his wife, two children and maybe a baby. So he's, he's scrimping and saving and, and every time a thought comes to his head, it's like he goes to Home Depot and he sees this, this drill press and he says, man, I, I love that drill press and I need it. But you know what? I gotta save. I gotta save my money. I gotta save my cards. I gotta save my Oh my. It's dinner time. We're going home. And there's no cooked food at home. Let's go buy something. No, 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 no. No, no. Let's save that money. Save that money. Let's put that for a ticket. Because we want everybody to be there. We want everybody to be there. And then, and then you hype up the whole vacation. You say, man, when I was in Oahu, man, it's, it's an amazing place. I've been there three times. Oh, that man is me. Is me. I'm trying to save it to go there. But it's, it's, it's a great place. And you... You, you land in Honolulu and, and you take Kamehameha Highway on the east side of the island and, and you look in your left and you see this mountain, this lush green mountain and it's, and it's going up like that and you can see the fog I don't know if it's a fog or a cloud but it's crawling, it's crawling up over the mountain like a movie it's crawling up there and it's crawling out and, and you, can, you can kind of feel the cool breeze but you think it's, no it's not from the mountain, it's from the ocean because the road that you're at, it's there's no shoulder. The shoulder is the beach. <laughs> Man, it's, it's pretty. And every five minutes, you want to get out of your car and you say, oh, man, this is great. This will be great in my album. And, and you look at the beach and you look at the water and you say, oh, man, it's amazing. And the sand and the sun is striking it. It's, just, it's words cannot describe. But you say, I want to save my money. I want to scrimp and save. I want to sacrifice. Maybe I can sell that stuff in my attic. I have stuff in my attic that I can say, sell. And as I sell it, you know, the money comes in and I, I can put that away in savings. Yes, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. A lot of sacrifice just so that everybody can be there. Just for that moment. That's Sunset Beach, by the way. It's amazing. Chill. Very chill area. And the food is, is amazing. I might, I might get lost here for a little bit, but because I'm there. But see, I don't want to just take myself. I just don't want to. I, I can save up money easily. Let's say $800 for, for a ticket over there. And, you know. I can live like a bum. There's beaches everywhere. I can just sleep on the beach. I don't need a hotel. Maybe food. See, I can save and bring myself there, but it's it's not as enjoyable. I want my family there. I want my daughter there. My son. The little baby. <laughs> and the wife. <laughs> yes. Yes, everybody. I want to see them. Now, if you're a close enough friend to me, you know, I, I might like, yeah, come and join. But you gotta scrimp and save yourself. <laughs> but anyway, I've been looking at the internet for pictures of heaven, and uh, I've been really disappointed with all these murals from, from old folks back in the 1600s. <laughs> but I can't imagine that's how heaven looks like from my country home. You know, we're gonna have two homes in heaven country and a city home. And that bright light right there is not the sun. God says there will be no sun there. 
Mm -hmm. That is coming from the New Jerusalem. Not from the New Jerusalem. But from God himself. He will be the light. Amen. And from a distance, we can see it from our country home. And we're going to say in our hearts, man, I can't wait till the next Sabbath to go over there. Mm -hmm. And celebrate spend the Sabbath with my God. Can you imagine that? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Who, for the joy that was set before him, despised, despising the shame of the cross, endured it for us. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. What is this joy, Jesus? He said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. See, I'm not putting down the cross. But the thing is, if we look at the, if Jesus looked at the cross and he said, that's the end and be all of everything. And he says, that's it, that's the end of me, Lord. God, Dad, I don't want to go through it. But he says, no, there's something beyond it. And that is what I'm going to base my joy on this walk that I'm going to walk, my glory that I gave up, the robe of righteousness for that bride, my servanthood, the pain and suffering on the cross. I despise all that for that joy. I'll endure it for that joy. But what is this joy? With unutterable love, Jesus welcomes his faithful ones to the joy of their Lord. The Savior's joy is in seeing in the kingdom of the Lord the souls that have been saved by his act and humiliation. And the redeemed will be sharers of his joy. As they behold among the blessed those who have been won to Christ through their prayers, labors and their loving sacrifice. As they gather about the great white throne, gladness, unspeakable, fill their hearts. When they behold those whom they have won for Christ and see the ones have gained others and still others, all brought into the haven of rest, there to lay their crowns at Jesus' feet and praise him to the end of the cycles of eternity. So what is the joy of the Lord? I don't want you to look at the person next to you. I know you want them to be in heaven. But do you desire them to be in heaven? Will you find that joy that the Lord based himself upon? Not the cross. There's no joy in the cross. There's joy beyond it. The joy is in seeing our families there. Our neighbors, that person that you prayed for. And you can't reach by your speech because you're just unable to. You just don't know how to speak the word, right words. Or through your prayers, thank God it will be there. Can you imagine that moment? That joy. Now Jesus is not taking a break right now. But as a replay of what we have just talked about, he took out his glory. His robe of righteousness for the rags. He served people. He cleansed them. And then he took their punishment. He says, I'll be the one to take the joy of the Lord. And as Jesus had done it, ought not be ourselves. Our Father in heaven, thank you, dear Lord, for 
for giving us this wonderful worship, for, for enabling us to, to worship you in this way. Thank you, Lord, for, for the many blessings. And may the message stick to our hearts and rekindle our hearts so that we may go out there in the joy of the Lord. Not for ourselves, Lord, but for the people around us. Not for what we want, but for what you will for us.